So up first, we have a presentation from Capral Limited with the ticker code CAA, Australia's largest extruder and distributor of aluminium products. To tell us more, we are joined by Managing Director, Tony Dragizevich. Tony, good morning. It's a pleasure to be able to present the Capral business this morning to everybody. Uh, so welcome, I'm Tony Dragizevich, the CEO at Capral. First of all, first off, I'd like to just give a brief overview of the business so we can turn to the next page. Okay, Capral is the largest supplier of aluminium extrusion and aluminium plate into the Australian market. Our core business is the manufacture and distribution of aluminium extrusion produced in six manufacturing plants supported by a national sales and distribution network Australian-wide. Aluminium is a strong, lightweight metal and is the preferred material used in lightweight construction applications. Our largest market is residential and commercial building, where we supply fabricators of windows and doors and numerous other building products. We also supply into a wide range of industrial applications, including truck and boat building. Our annual sales revenue exceeds 500 million. Our market share is around 26%. We have seven local extrusion competitors with imports making up around one third of the market. And we currently employ over 900 people. Highlights of our first half results, which were um, issued yesterday. A uh, very strong first half, our best result in many, many years. Volumes up 33% on last year to 36,000 tonne. A uh, strong trading EBITDA of 15.7 million, up nearly 10 million on the same period last year. A very strong first half was driven by higher sales demand in, in all the key markets in which we operate, uh, improved operating leverage in our manufacturing plants and the benefits of the restructuring that we undertook at our Queensland plant in 2019. We have a very strong balance sheet with net cash, 33.8 million at the end of, at the end of June. Earnings per share for the first half, 93 cents, um, significantly up on the same period last year, and we declared our first interim dividend for some time at 20 cents per share, fully frank. As I said earlier, the market conditions have been buoyant in our key markets of residential building and also the industrial sectors, all assisted, a number of them assisted by government stimulus, particularly the house, in house building. We made a key investment in additional capacity in New South Wales with the acquisition of an extrusion plant from G. James, one of our uh, extrusion competitors, which we acquired in February 2021, February this year. And we spent a lot of effort getting that plant, plant up and running and integrated into Capital's manufacturing network over the past six months. I just want to give you a bit of a breakdown on Capital's volume. So our total volume, 85% of it is extrusion, which by and large we manufacture in our six extrusion plants nationally. And we also import uh, rolled product, which is sheet and plate aluminium, and that makes about 15% of our total volume. In the middle chart there, the pie chart, you'll see that 59% or roughly 60% of our total volume is sold to large customers directly from our aluminium extrusion plants. The other 40% of our volume is sold through our own distribution business, which is made up of both um, extrusion and roll products. The industries that we're exposed to uh, that shown on the right-hand pie chart, so 45% of our volume goes into a variety of industrial segments. We're close to 55% of our volume is into residential and residential and commercial construction. Our key, our, you know, the key influencing market for us is residential commencements. And as you can see, that slide on the right-hand side there shows housing starts in total for the, um, for the past uh, 10 years. Uh, in 2021, residential commencements rose very strongly, a forecast to roll rose very strolling, strongly this year. And certainly we saw that in the first half, driven by low in interest rates, home builder stimulus, and state government first homeowner incentives. So a very buoyant year in 2021 in the housing market, as you can see by that graph on the right-hand side. Capital's volumes are mainly aligned with detached and low-rise housing, which is the the lighter shade, or sorry, the darker shades of green on that graph, which the, the top part of the graph is um, multi rears high rise, which mainly are mainly imported windows, not, ma not manufactured in Australia. So you can see there that in 2021, we're looking at our best, um, best year in terms of dwelling commencements for the market in which we operate in in the past decade. 
2022, the forecast is for the market to moderate slightly um, during 2022, but our customers are telling us that they've got a, a lot of demand on, which will see them right through to the end of next year at least. So moving to the next slide, it's just uh, some examples of where Capital's products end up, both from project homes to architectural homes through to a variety of commercial buildings um, and mainly windows and doors, but also a wide range of other applications, for example, pool fencing, slat fencing, uh, sunshades, et cetera. So moving on to the next slide, when we talk about our industrial business, which we've seen, which is, has rebounded very strongly this year. Um, in particular, we've seen very, very strong growth in the marine sector um, after a relatively slow 2020. Uh, the transport sector uh, lifting very strongly on the back of infrastructure, um, roading works up 9% in the first half of the year. Manufacturing and general fabrication have also been robust, robust and we've been have been lifting our share against imports over the past uh, 12 months in the light of import supply chain difficulties and stronger Australian made sentiment in relation to post COVID conditions. As I said earlier, imports generate will make up around one third of our market. Uh, that share has dropped down to about 5% in the last uh, 12 months and local extruders have been the beneficiary of that, uh, that change. Solar rail is a growing market for us. It used to be all imported. Um, but we picked up the largest solar rail distributor in Australia uh, with, a, with, a, with a contract last year, and we see that trajectory continuing into the into the years ahead. Uh, and there's just some examples of where our industrial products end up from um, from boats to to architectural um, um, awards to through to uh, trailer units on on the back of transport uh, trucks. So, so just quickly on the outlook for the balance of the year, uh, how we see it. We've enjoyed a very strong housing market, as I said earlier, in 2021, and we expect that to continue um, with housing starts forecasting to grow by 16% this year. That'll underpin the volumes in our manufacturing operations and in our business. We continue to operate as an essential business uh, through COVID restrictions. We have done over the past year and uh, ever since the past 18 months. So we've been fortunate. Um, even now in Sydney, uh, you know, all of our operations are still, are still operating. Um, and while we do see that the city market uh, construction issues, the restrictions in the city market construction area having an impact, they will be relatively modest in the, in the next six months because we do operate nationally. One of our key focuses is growing our own aluminium distribution business. So we've got control over our end customers. The newly acquired plant in New South Wales, we're looking to ramp up capacity, the full capacity by the first quarter of next year. We've moved it to two shifts currently with a third shift on by the end of this year. So on the basis of the, the current market conditions and where we forecast some debate, uh, we're looking at a trading, a forecasting trading EBITDA of 31 to 33 million for the full year 2021. Uh, we run a calendar financial year with a statutory EBITDA of 51 to 53 million. Obviously the statutory EBITDA under new accounting standards does not include our rental costs. Uh, and uh, we believe that the trading EBITDA is a more representative number of our true underlying earnings position. We will, uh, it's a key focus of the board to continuation of fully frank dividends. We have, we have, an, uh, we have large tax losses in capital, but we also have um, access to fully frank dividends for the years ahead. So thank you very much for your attention this morning and uh, all the best for the rest of the day. Tony, thanks for the great presentation. I know you just did touch on this just now, but um, a webinar attendee has asked, so with strong half-year results, are you expecting the next half to have similar sales volumes and revenue figures? And what annual growth percentage are you targeting going forward? The uh, second half is typically stronger seasonally for us. So we're very confident that um, all things being equal, that the volumes in the second half of the year will actually be stronger than the first half which will give us a, you know, a, very, a very strong strong number in terms of growth for 2021 and the vicinity of around, you know, overall will be around 15 to 20%. Um, next year, that will moderate a little bit. We're still, we're still expecting the housing market and the other markets to remain strong. So our growth projection for 2022, a little bit early at this stage, but we're looking at another four to 5% growth in the year ahead. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us again, Tony. We look forward to further updates.